This is a common mosquito. Where did this mosquito come from? How do mosquitoes live? And why does man fight mosquitoes? Mosquitoes breed in water. Stagnant water in a swamp like this is a good breeding place. Mosquitoes breed in trash heaps where water may collect. Old tin cans filled with rainwater become breeding places for mosquitoes. Undrained puddles of stagnant water are filled with mosquito wrigglers during the breeding season. Most of the mosquitoes that annoy us breed in many places right around our homes. They breed in damp spots around the house and yard, and especially in roof gutters which are clogged up. Mosquitoes even breed in such odd places as trees, where there are holes filled with rainwater. The common mosquito lays its eggs on the water. Here they are, a floating mass of eggs, like a boat or a raft. A raft of eggs of the common mosquito contains from 100 to 400 eggs. In warm weather, the eggs hatch in a day or so into larvae. The larvae squirm and pull free from the egg cases. The larvae come to the water surface to breathe. Each larva breathes through a tube called a siphon at the end of its body. Tiny brushes at the mouth feed the larva by sweeping in small bits of food along with a little water. The larva is commonly called a wriggler. During the larval stage, a mosquito sheds its skin or molts. Ordinarily, it molts four times. Between each molting, the larvae grow rapidly. Thousands of mosquito larvae may be living in just such a pond as this. They keep alert to dangers about them. A falling leaf or other disturbance may cause the larvae to dash downward to the bottom. A sudden shadow over the water sends them wriggling to the bottom. But even then, they are not safe from this dragonfly nymph. The dragonfly is only one of many creatures that destroy mosquito larvae. If the larva escapes its enemies during the week or two of its larval stage, it begins its fourth molt. It breaks out of its last larval skin and enters the pupil stage. This change from one form to another is spoken of as metamorphosis. When the mosquito's pupil form is fully developed, it crawls out of the old larval skin. At this stage of its development, the mosquito ceases to be a larva and becomes a pupa. The pupa cannot eat. It breathes through two tubes on its back. The pupal form lasts about two or three days while the mosquito grows inside. When it is fully developed, it takes in air and swells until it splits the pupal skin and comes out. Then it rests and breathes for a while as it gains strength. When it is strong enough, it flies away for something to eat.
it may find food in flowers filled with nectar. Or it may feed on juices of plants and trees or the rotten fruit in an orchard. The male mosquito eats only vegetable foods. It can be identified by its feathery feelers. The female mosquito likes blood and eats it when she can. This is a common mosquito. She hungrily punches right through the skin and sucks her victim's blood to fill her stomach. After feeding and mating, the female mosquito returns to the swamp or some other suitable place to lay her eggs. Or she may rest through the winter. Male mosquitoes soon die. This female mosquito laying her eggs is a member of the Anopheles family. The Anopheles mosquito carries malaria germs. Each egg is a potential threat to the health of human beings. Here are larvae that have hatched from the Anopheles eggs. Unlike common mosquito larvae, these larvae of the Anopheles rest almost parallel to the surface and breathe through holes rather than through a siphon or breathing tube. The pupa of the Anopheles looks much like the pupa of the common mosquito. Here is the female Anopheles mosquito feeding with her body held high in a straight line with her long beak. She sticks her beak through the skin, secreting saliva to make the beak go in easier. With the saliva, malaria germs are carried into the blood. This man has acquired malaria from the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito. Malaria causes chills followed by fever. Recurring cycles of chills and fever sap the victim's strength. The best way to wipe out malaria is to prevent mosquito breeding. To combat the mosquito menace, scientists continually study the mosquitoes that carry diseases. They seek new ways to control and destroy them. In the laboratories, chemicals are discovered for killing mosquitoes. As soon as tested, they are put to practical use. Here, the common catch basin found on side streets has been sprayed with a solution for killing larvae. The mosquito eggs, larvae, and pupae all die when deprived of air. A similar treatment is given a swamp near a congested residential area. The white fog produced by this machine contains a chemical that will kill adult mosquitoes as it drifts over their breeding places. The airplane has proved of service in spraying large areas. Breeding places such as ponds and swamps may be destroyed by draining where this is practicable. Places that cannot be drained may be stocked with minnows, newts, and fish. These natural enemies of the mosquito help destroy the larvae. Weeds are often cut in damp areas so that sunlight can kill the larvae. Wise house owners screen windows, doors, and porches to keep out mosquitoes. But despite our efforts, the mosquito's life cycle goes on. Female mosquitoes lay eggs. The eggs hatch into larvae that feed and grow and molt. The larvae become pupae. Then, after a few days, the pupae become full-grown mosquitoes. The life cycle, or metamorphosis, of the mosquito is complete, but its danger to man is just beginning. It, along with billions of others that rise from the breeding places, may annoy people and carry diseases to them the world over.